one one nil away from home against Wolves. And it was the performance that we all kind of expected to see from United, especially off the back of the announcement that, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo would uh, be re-signing for the club. Um, I think most of us, most fans who are objective and aren't, you know, only sexuals as they call them on the social media feed and, you know, um, aren't people that you would find on the Stratford Paddock YouTube channel, whatever. When we look at our team, the last thing we think is that we need like more attacking talent. If anything, we think we need more midfielders. We need more you know, defensive midfielder specifically or maybe some cut or maybe some options at right back specifically to kind of improve the way we attack as a team collectively. But it definitely is a problem with how we're coached and how we build up our play for the most part I think Maguire for the most part I think the back line with the exception of Varane isn't the best on the ball I think all the players have their flaws um, there's no way of progressing the ball from the keeper to the defence to the defensive midfielder to the order to the two players playing in that double pivot and then kind of forwarding it onto the players in the attacking positions it just doesn't work too well and there's a lack of coaching and just understanding maybe what the best option is maybe it's maybe going a lot more you know uh uh, route one maybe that's a great option I'm not really sure but at the moment I think a lot of objective fans can realize that and for all the attacking talent we have we do play quite mediocre football it just feel like a little bit of an individual brilliance FC we give up we give the ball to some of our better players and hope that they're able to produce a piece of magic and this game against Wolves was a good example of it Mason Green was able to pop up on the 80th minute and you know finish and put to, well, finish a pretty decent move um really really well like incredibly well he did this kind of you know um he did this kind of trademark step over with a finish low finish into the far corner expertly done the keeper kind of got a hand to it but it still managed to trickle into the bottom corner because there was too much power and precision in the shot like incredible right the kid's a star absolute star he's able to pop up with minutes with last minute quote-unquote winners or influential goals decisive goals in games is really otherworldly especially considering his age um you could definitely see him kind of scoring more and more goals as the years progress and he becomes more experienced and he maybe slowly but surely kind of moves from the wing into the central midfield position or central striker position but that aside the game itself was i thought fairly terrible from us um the, the, the double pivot in the middle didn't work i think um fred and pogba had a really hard time in the first half especially fred i think pogba didn't do any better really for the most part even though he was trying i think he came in his own a little bit in the second half um fred really kind of threw up a lot of questions in terms of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's selection whether or not i think fred selection fred's constant selection for united especially playing in a double pivot it's further evidence that maybe Oli just doesn't rate Donny van der Beek because there's no way anybody can say that Donny van der Beek would play as worse or maybe worse than Fred has played in the last two games for the most part he just sometimes and that's the thing with Fred it's not really his fault because I think he's just one of those players he either plays an 8 out of 10 or 4 there's no rule in between he just is what it is um, and I think in general a player like Fred might be best suited to play alongside a real disciplined um, traditional quote-unquote defensive midfielder because he kind of engages more he goes wondering um, again he might misplace a pass here or two so you need that other defensive midfielder to kind of clean up some of his mess right that's why I think happens when really the the kind of key way to do it is to have the Fred character be like a cover stitch, right who's a lot more responsible a lot more careful a lot more cute a little bit more cultured on the ball he doesn't lose it as often so that you've got two really tenacious ball winning midfielders in like Kovacic and maybe a Georgino and maybe a Kante playing in that midfield position that's where it kind of really comes to its own but when you have a player like Pogba who isn't the best press who isn't the most press resistant especially from in front of deep um and you got someone like a Fred who again isn't the best most pressure resistant and also gives the ball away it just leads to a lot of lost possession in the middle of the park and one of the biggest things that happened I thought in the game I think a lot of people recognize it because I see a lot of people tweeting and sharing images and screenshots is that where we line up in this sort of like 4-2-3-1 formation right with Bruno Fernandes sort of playing as a number 10 in front of Fred and Pogba so, so they're kind of playing in like a wide triangle position but what ends up happening when you actually watch the game I think I've argued this for a very long time said to people Bruno Fernandes isn't a really good midfielder he's an, obviously an amazing finish of the ball probably up there with, he's probably one of the better strikers in the league even though he's not a traditional striker but in terms of being a midfielder being able to receive the ball in a half turn drop a shoulder pass the ball like he just does, doesn't have it he's not not a number 10 not in the 
let's say in a conventional sort of like, you know, Philippe Quartino way, right? In, when he was at when he was at Liverpool, that ability to kind of dribble past a player, touch a ball, control it, skip one pass, uh, maybe shoot. Obviously, the shooting is definitely similar, if not better, than uh, Quartino because his accuracy is really incredible. But in terms of being a midfielder and being disciplined in that position, he's not. So what ends up happening in that game against Wolves is that you saw Fred or Pogba whenever they got the ball, they looked up to pass to somebody. This entire front line of Sancho, Greenwood, James, and Bruno Fernandes was in one line there was no there was massive bits of space in between these guys and you had to basically if you were afraid of Pogba I think I mentioned it on Twitter the other day you had to essentially thread a ball through the eye of a needle to find one of your attacking players and then you had to hope that they were able to skip past seven or two players in order to get a, a shot on goal when really the, the the kind of progression that you'd want is that you'd want your number 10 and your number six and let's say your number four to be kind of carrying the ball in the midfield a little bit a little bit further up the pitch and then they'll be trying to find one of these three in James uh, Greenwood or Sancho right that's what you'd want from them you don't want you don't want the ball just to go from that so far deep all the way up front because there's just too much distance to cover players are going to in, come in between and what ends up happening is they're going to get hit on the counter a lot of times that's what basically kept happening to us there's a lot of space you, you saw, especially when you saw Adama Traore he's already really strong runner on the ball he was just running into like acres of space right because again there was what we weren't compact enough in the midfield and I think playing against Wolves, which, you know, they're fairly decent um, opposition. I think, you know, um, House and Senate the other day on his channel, you know, I don't know what people expected. That the Wolves are a good team. Yes, we, we know they're a good team, but we didn't play well. We played really badly. Um, we let Wolves disturb our game too much. Um, we kind of played into their hands. Um, we didn't really get ourselves situated and balanced too often. And I feel like unless Greenwood did pull out that absolute individual moment of brilliance, I don't think people could argue or say that we had a real chance of winning that game. It felt like more of a game where Wolves possibly should have won they had a lot of really good clear-cut chances and this is again a further example of maybe this is our proof that needs that maybe you can win the league with just having good players I don't think you can I think you need to have a good manager too or at least like a very competent coach that can bring out the best in those players and put them in the correct formation and know how to rotate properly know how to you know, do the correct substitutions because I thought the substitutions were insane um, for the most part what were they I think he, if anything he, who did he brought I think he brought on like Cavani first or something no is it no, I think he brought on Cavani and then Martial. Insane substitutions when you think that we were getting overrun in the midfield. Essentially end up working for the best because, you know, um, all those strikers and attacking players end up occupying other midfielders. So maybe Greenwood got ignored somewhat on the right-hand side when he switched on the wing, which kind of led to his goal. But overall, the substitutions were insane. Didn't make any sense whatsoever. So part of me thinks it's difficult to expect a manager like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to win the league especially when you look at the other managerial talents that he has to compete against the two shorts the clubs the peps um, it's just difficult to expect him to do that but then on the other side it makes me think maybe if we just give him the right players and because he's able to provide a safe fun atmosphere for the players they don't really seem like they feel like they're too under pressure they all seem kind of relaxed even though again the football is pretty diabolical they're all pushing each other there's a lot of competition for places um there's that nice competitive spirit around the team in general right without it being too mean-spirited especially when it was under Jose Mourinho maybe we could kind of good vibes our way to a league title but I just don't see it because there's been no so far no real example of an average coach being able to win the league people will say Manuel Pellegrini but I still think Manuel Pellegrini is a far better coach than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer right I think his CV's proved that I think a lot of people are sat there think even the biggest fans of Ole can't really sit there and think if he leaves United he's going to have the pick of the litter in terms of clubs he can pick and you or especially if he's uh, you know been as successful as they say he has and usually a manager of his ilk you know managing a club like United you should if you end up leaving United and you do a good job you should end up being able to pick whatever club you want and basically walk into them right I'll be able to kind of put your application forward and be you know seriously considered and I don't think that's going to be the case with him so um, it's just interesting to see what's going to happen but again weird game we end up winning because of individual moment the brilliance but again Greenwood was incredible that finish was just otherworldly um, I don't think there's many players in our team that could do that especially on the whim it was un it was unlucky or oh, it was kind of disappointing to see how um, this is disappointing to see how badly Jadon Sancho played again I think there isn't really a plan for him it feels like we don't really have an idea of how we want to utilise him we're just hoping he's going to replicate what he did at Borussia Dortmund I think a lot of our players are like that I think Bruno Fernandes just kind of not lucked into but he's sort of adequately set up for this team right in how he plays but in terms of the traditional players number 10 I don't think they would do that well in this team either because we don't really have a great way of transitioning the ball I think if I'm not mistaken 
someone told me or saw a stat that said Edson Cavani had like zero touches in the box. And I think he came on before Martial, I'm pretty sure. He came on around the 60th minute or something like that. And he had zero touches in the box, which shows you, yes, maybe Edson Cavani isn't the most mobile of strikers, you know, even though he kind of makes a lot of runs. Um, fair enough. And maybe he was getting marked and there was a lot of compacts. There wasn't enough space in the defense of, of Wolves, right? They were a fairly well-organized team. But for your main striker, or if your main one of your main strikers to come on in the 60th odd minute and not have a touch in the box, that shows you that the ball's not progressing up the pitch in a kind of succinct, kind of method, methodical way, right? There's no real pattern of play or style of play that's kind of leading us to creating chances in a real measured and expected way. For instance, Man City have got a way of playing where you know how they're going to score goals again and again, right? That cross into the box, cut back or whatever, and someone's going to latch onto it. So far, all our goals look like amazing candidates for goal of the month but there's not a real team way of how we construct them for the most part that's the only concerning bit i'd say going forward but again tough tough game to play we end up getting the victory there is an argument to be said if you want to win the league you have to win these games ugly and we managed to do that but the problem is i think against some of the lesser teams we end up not being able to turn we end up not being able to turn these performances in or some of our star players don't end up trying to haven't got the ability to win us the game and then we end up losing or win or, or lose losing or drawing those games and i think that's the issue we need to improve how we play from minute one to the end of the game and kind of dominate matches a little bit, strike fear in the opponents, you know, kill them before half time to have a real chance of winning the league, I think. Because from what I've seen from Liverpool, from what I've even seen from Man City over the weekend, these guys are going to be on smoke and we can't really afford to just hope and pray some of our best players end up pulling us out of the mire. We definitely have to be a better collective team. And hopefully with a couple of hours or days to go in a transfer window, we can still see um, developments. We can get maybe a midfielder in. I think this talk already been happening of Dan James moving to lead for 30 million which is insane considering you know I don't really rate the guy but it's a great value I think he's going to be a far better player playing for Leeds especially under Bielsa's stewardship he's going to be a far better coach for him than Oli would be to be honest I think he'll work better in their system he'll develop more as a player and he'll get the minutes that he needs to kind of progress his career but if we're able to take that money and maybe you know put that into a defensive midfielder um, I'd, I'd, I'd much rather we go for like a Basuma than a Ruben Neves which has been rumoured or a really conventional whatever else European defensive midfielder you want to get but somebody needs to play in that position so he can free up a Pogba because in that position in that formation you can essentially have Pogba playing alongside that DM you don't even need to play Fred you know what I mean that's the beauty of it and then what you do is that it frees up Fred to be the replacement for a Pogba when you want him to give, a, give him a rest or it frees up McTominay to be a replacement for somebody maybe playing in a number 10 do you know what I mean it frees up positions a lot more it makes it a little bit more of an easier thing to do and also you don't have to rely on having two defensive midfielders playing in that position as opposed to playing one as most other big successful teams do but you know Baby steps, baby steps, baby steps.